good afternoon. This is Rose Reardon. I decided to come on and do a surprise live this afternoon. Considering that I wasn't able to do one this morning, I didn't want to end the day without coming online and seeing who's out there and who would like to fellowship a little bit. Uh, I know some of you will be having afternoon rest, others will be get, beginning to be getting, beginning to get supper ready, but um, I'm just going to maybe do 20, 25 minutes online. Good afternoon, Colleen Swartz, lovely to see you this afternoon. Happy Saturday afternoon, Magilly, lovely to see you online. Just popping on for a gem, um, a nugget this afternoon. Uh, particularly since I wasn't on this morning. Hi, Lynn van Collier. So lovely to see you. What a great day. Um, it's windy out in Fishhook, but I know in most parts it's quite hot this afternoon. And uh, that is the beauty of being near the sea. At least uh, there is a breeze. Nice to see Jess online. And I think I saw Janice as well. Good afternoon, just decided to come on for an afternoon nugget from the ways and the will of God. We've been looking mainly at consistency, the consistent love of God, the unfailing love of God, that God has his love on 100% and 100% of the time and that we also have been looking at not to allow our outward external circumstances to affect our outcome um, that we need to stay steady and allow what god is doing and has shown us to have its full work and not be buffeted by the economy or the status quo but to hear God and to run in his adventure. Lovely to see Janice, lovely to see Tennis, lovely to see Brenda Evans. Uh, we have six of you online at this moment. I'm going to wait um, another two minutes and then we'll get going. Just because we can. Hello, Pamela Lloyd from Chester in the United Kingdom. So lovely to have you online. I believe it is extremely cold by you. Keep warm. Hi to Veronica Schultz. Lovely to see you, Veronica. This is a good day. A good Saturday afternoon of fabulous fun in the sun in our side of the world and fabulous fire weather in the cold part of the world where you need to keep warm. <laughs> just so good to see you all online this afternoon let me put my ipad over there out of the way and let's see what our father daddy god has to say today so he is a good good father let's have a look um What about this statement? Hi, Tavi, so good to see you. What about this statement? Tension does not mean something is wrong, is wrong, but means that something is happening. Wow. I really needed that this afternoon. Tension does not necessarily mean that something is wrong, but that something is happening. You know that expression? Hi, Rhonda, all the way from Texas. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, um, so sometimes when things are pressurized, we only think it's the devil. But sometimes when pressure comes, it is God moving and God shaping us differently to what we may be expected or quicker than what we expected 
and um, so just know that tension doesn't mean something's wrong it means something is happening there is never movement without tension if you are relaxing at home and you reach for your coffee cup your hand must tense up in order to grip the handle properly so there is no movement even on the physical body without tension you have to extend your arm you have to put your hand around the cup and there's a tension to make that body work as it is in the natural so it is in the spiritual and so tension does not mean that there's something wrong whenever we relate at depth with people there will be tension tension is always one of the ingredients and it's important that we step back from the stress so that tension does not become friction so tension has a purpose but if you don't understand the tension it ends up bringing friction and so let's not let's not continually rework the stress until it causes friction but see the tension as potential for change and to move you into a different uh, shape mold model and season i think particularly women are good at trying to push the tension under the carpet even a tense atmosphere it's more women than man uh, than a man that will fill the, the the tense atmosphere with all kinds of babble <laughs> what did you think about this and did you see that on the news what do you think about the weather whereas many men there are many men that are not put off by attention they're not put off by silence but because we are the bubbly ones mainly the woman we just want to fill every space because we want people to be comfortable we want people to have fun we want people to um yeah comfortable and fun but tension is necessary doesn't matter how much you look at the cup of coffee and say this is so fun i'm chilling with my coffee unless you put your hand out and grab the cup and the tension on your arm brings the cup towards you the cup's going to stay there it can be fun to look at the cup can be fun to describe the cup it can be fun to speak about the cup it can be fun to even smell the coffee across the table but it requires a movement of your arm in your hand to reach for that cup of coffee and so in the same way change there's often tension around change and tension tells us that we are close to something in the purpose of god I needed to hear that this afternoon too. I needed to hear that. The tension says we are close to something great. So don't let's stop at the tension and try and remove the tension. But go through knowing that something great is is about to happen. Um and it's going to be something in the purposes of God. Something about the purposes of God. So sometimes God will allow tension to take us out of the place of the status quo and bring us into something far better and different for his glory. So make it a positive experience. And uh and if we don't, we will lose control to the enemy. If every time there's a tension, we run away. we will not take the ground that god has promised us and has for us we need to begin to get excited and say tension is like a birth pain with art contraction that mother cannot birth that baby and so in the same way we need to know that when there is tension then you can ask better questions to determine the purpose of God. Okay God, if this is going down, what does this mean? Show me why you have brought or allowed this tension. 
It's like pulling a rope from a place of slackness to a place of a tightrope. And a slack rope has no purpose, but a tightrope means there's something that, there's a burden, there's a weight of glory, there's something on the rope that is going to work out for God's glory and for your purpose. Right now there is a quickening in the spirit across the earth and Father is speeding up the seasons as it says, the Lord himself will speed up the seasons and shorten the days of waiting. Many of, of you have had delay after delay after de delay. And I want to offer to you this afternoon that you have gone past the door a few times and then not today. And then not now, maybe next week. And there's a door that will take you in to this quickening and this acceleration and the shortening of days. But we have to go through the tension to birth that new season and to go through the door into the wide open space. For what you find yourself in can be very restrictive. Whenever there is expansion, as it says in Isaiah, we have to lengthen the cords. We have to increase our reach and we have to throw wide the curtains, speaking about enlargement, moving from us four and no more, to launching out like an eagle is launched out onto a thermal. Do you know all the finer details? No. But you do know that God has brought tension to bring to birth your new season and to bring divine acceleration. So have you felt the pace of your spirituality and faith increasing? There is like a beginning to get an urgency as we've been in lockdown to come to a place where we begin to step up from that place and start to ask the right questions about how we're shaping it beyond this place of lockdown or if the lockdown continues uh, even in this time of lockdown that we are able to shape and place it and produce uh, God's divine order and, the, and manifest the glory of God in regardless of the outward and external circumstances. Um, and so there's a change of gear. For, since March, we've been toddling along driving the car in first and second gear but there's an acceleration talking about cars i had a number of dreams during this time of lockdown from march until now and the two in particular and i believe it applies to each one of you this afternoon as the body of christ the one was i went to buy a car and i was looking at these different cars when like the car salesman, I presume, or a man came over and he said, this is the car that you need. And it looked like it was black, like a Hummer. Some of the people online that like cars will know what a Hummer looks like. It's very square. I wouldn't say it's very streamlined, but I got into it, a leather seating, and everything was electronic. And um, the key was the way you start the car. Everything was electronic. And so I'm driving it down the road and I'm having to reach back. There's switches behind me and sensors and I, I'm doing fine. And, but I am aware that as I'm going along that they, I'm finding uh, all kinds of things. Like in a regular car, the flickers here and windscreen wipers there. But now as I just run my hand around, I find the different sensors. So... I'm understanding how this works and I am so so excited about it and I start to show people and most of them were so excited but there were ones or twos that said to me what did you do with the old vehicle which was my Volkswagen Polo and I said well they said well you should keep it anyhow because you can use it for this and use it for that and they weren't very excited about the new thing some were and some weren't. 
And so in the dream, I say, I'm speaking to myself in the dream. I'm going, now, how am I going to get my Volkswagen Polo back? I'm wanting to keep everybody happy. And I could see I needed to go with this different model, which was all electronic, which is interesting. It's all about online. But I also wanted this manual way. And that's how the dream ended. And the other dream I had, I had this old car that was painted with red oxide. It was an old, also very square, but old. And I went outside and I went, well, this is all well, but there's no air in the tires and there's no petrol. And somehow I got that car, that old car, to my, it was standing parked outside my original family home from where I was born in the dream. And I thought, well, there's nothing I can do now. I'm going to go to sleep. And when I got up the next morning, I went outside. There was air in the tires and petrol in the tank. And I looked down the road and there was walking a man with a little case, like a mechanic's case. And the revelation that I got as I looked at him was, it was the Lord. And that he had been with me from, from childhood, from my birth. Because uh, the vehicle was outside my family home. And that he was the one that while I was at rest would come, but he didn't want to be known. And he would come and put things in order so that the car would go. Now, whenever we dream about cars, it's uh, a vehicles, uh, whether it's cars, planes, trains, buses or boats, it's talking about the momentum of business and ministry, uh, your calling. And so the Lord is very clearly speaking to me that there is a difference and a new model. And there will be those that will be so excited. They want to see every detail of the new model. And there will be others that feel like it's out of control and it's not the old way. And so the Lord is reminding me of these two dreams as I'm sharing with you this afternoon. It's not like I came online prepared for this. And the Lord is reminding me that we, the Church of Jesus Christ, are in a season of divine acceleration. Because we are about to see the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. And it's not going to be at a, uh, necessarily a church meeting where five people come to the front. Or even 300 come to the front. It's going to be the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdoms of our God. And of his Christ. And so we need to lift our eyes above those things that hinder. And this divine acceleration will become your normal part of experience. So we need to say yes more quickly. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't have full understanding, Lord, but I'm not going to be stuck in human sentiment. I'm going to move with what you're showing me because I don't want to miss the boat. There, there weren't any disciples that stayed on the shore when the Lord said, um, when the Lord said, come on, we're going to the other side. He said, you go, I'll clear the crowd. Not one of the disciples sat on the shore and said, I'll just wait for Jesus to affirm that we meant to get in the boat. They got in the boat by his single instruction. And in the middle of the lake, the storm came up and they must have been going, this was not a good idea. And maybe there were one or two of them that didn't even want to get in the boat the first time, in the first place. And then they berating the others. You see now, we should never have gone this way. And then the storm comes up and Jesus comes walking past. He sits on going to the other side. He's not even looking at the storm. And they call out to him. They say, Lord, do you, don't you care that we could perish? And then the Lord gets in the boat. I'm so glad they called out to him. That they didn't let him pass them by. And he got in the boat. Hey, Lulu. And he calmed the storm. And he said, come on, you have little faith. So I want you to know when tension comes, it's because your faith is under tension. That the Lord wants to use even your mustard seed faith to take you out of that that has limit to that that is limit, limiting. So what is happening in your life right now that you need to process with God through that tension and say yes to God. Come, sweetheart, come up. Say yes to God. There we go. Say yes to God. Sometimes he, he comes and he pumps up the wheels and puts new petrol in the tank, but he doesn't want to be seen. He wants you to be assured that he is leading you and seeing to every detail. 
He doesn't necessarily need to sit you down and, and give you the whole story. 25 points with A, B, and C on each point. And five hours later, he's still reassuring you like he did with Moses. Moses said, why me? And the Lord said, put your hand in, take your hand out. Then it was leprous. Then it was clean. Then it was leprous. Take your stick. And the Lord showed him, you're not going in your own strength. I'm sending you with signs and wonders. And so whenever God moves you out of an old model or an old whatever it is, thinking about these cars, he's moving you by faith and not by sight. A man from the healing rooms in Spokane came to speak in Cape Town and as his plane came in, he had a vision of a, a, a soldier or a warrior in armor and there was a cutout for the nose and the mouth, but there was no cutout for the eyes on this bronze face cover. And he said, Lord, what does this mean? People here don't see spiritually? And the Lord said, no, this is a city of people that live by faith and not by sight. And that was for Cape Town. And so you will never know what God wants to do unless you say yes to the nudge and you allow that tension and you move beyond the limitation and see what God does. We started the church on the fact that we had a crusade because we had a heart for people getting born again. And at the end of the crusade, the evangelist said, please come up onto the platform and said, people, this is your pastor and his wife. I was so shocked that we suddenly had a congregation Oh, well, they didn't know us. They knew the evangelist. So by the following Sunday, only seven people turned up. But if that didn't happen, we would still be waiting on the shore to say, Jesus, did you say we must get in this boat? And is it to cross there? Or did you actually want us to wait for you? There are too many things that we over-process and over-spiritualize. And we need to... Lift up the anchor and allow the wind of the Spirit to take the boat, the vessel, to write into His perfect plan and His perfect will. Let us respond to the process of growth with obedience. And most of us, hand on heart, know that we are behind times in our own development. And God is calling us to run to catch up. I pray that this afternoon's nugget, that tension doesn't mean that there's something wrong and um, that we've come into a season of divine acceleration. Don't try and cover the tension. Allow the tension like a birth pain to birth you into a season of acceleration. Let us run in the fields of the Lord, the adventures of God, the harvest of the Lord in the relevancy of the season that we live in. The seasons change, even the way has changed. Don't pull up your nose at the electronic in the new vehicle um, and want to go back to that, that's all. Just let God do it. Trust him, just trust him. He, you can trust him with your heart. You can trust him with your emotions. You can trust him with your whole life. You can trust him with your past. You can trust him with today. And you can trust him with your future. Have an excellent evening. Know that the Father has already sent the angels of harvest ahead of you and has set the plan for your life in motion with an acceleration. And you will see it manifesting in the season that we are stepped into. And this se each season is loaded with its own rhythm. Get used to the new rhythm. It's a rhythm of acceleration. Enjoy your evening, and I will see you tomorrow morning on Word of Life Facebook page. Thank you that you came along on the live, the surprise live on the Saturday afternoon. God bless you.